Hello, everyone. Welcome to our broadcast uh, right from the horse's mouth. We're glad to have you with us. We know this is a Saturday afternoon. We appreciate you taking time to sit down in front of that screen and visit with us as we share with you a very important topic. Those of you that are already active RVers and those of you that want to become an RVer, you understand the value and the importance of an RV technician in keeping that machine running that you are loving to take down the highway. Well, today we're going to have with us Terry Cooper, the Texas RV professor, and he's going to be sharing with you about how you can learn about becoming a technician, actually become a active technician, and possibly even take that into a mobile type of business if that's your desire. So, Mr. Cooper, I welcome you, and I know you're down there in sunny Texas today and hopefully having a great day, and I'm just going to bow out and let you take it and run with it. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it. Well, welcome everyone. I um, it's interesting when you when you start to think about what you're going to do and what you're going to share with folks. All these different feelings conjure up, and so as we're going through, I'm going to share some things that have taken place in my past, and then some things that have taken place in these last few weeks as we've all been sheltered in. Okay, so just bear with me. Um, I'll try not to get too wound up in it. Sometimes I have a tendency to get a little bit more emotional when I see things, because particularly when you start thinking about little fellas, the children that are impacted by what's going on in our lives. You know, things were rocking along pretty good. I don't know how it was with you guys, but for us down here, we had record-breaking classes and everything was rocking and rolling and everything. And we had to make some changes and we were able to adjust. And so things are going on. But you know, this thing has really gone crazy. And, and I've been amazed at how people have reacted. And you can tell a lot of folks got short tempers and they're kind of reacting. But, you know, we're seeing things that there's health issues involved. I mean, those of you that know about the industry, we lost one of our major leaders. His name was Gary Bunzer, and we called him the doctor, the RV doctor. Well, he picked up the virus and he was out of uh, Seattle and they ended up putting him on respirators. Well, he didn't, he didn't make it. So, you know, when you see things like that, it's just kind of like, wow, this isn't just something I'm seeing on television. This is a real life person that I know went through this. And then we start seeing things with the economy, the things shutting down. And I um, mean, here in the park, we've had some folks that have come and they're sheltering in here. And these guys are involved with, um, outdoor concerts. They're involved with a lot of the sound system for churches and big events and things like that. And like they told me, they said, there's nothing. It's dead. There's no concerts. Uh, we're just now, and at the time when they came, of course, there was nothing going on in the churches, but that's beginning to change. So a lot of things was really have really impacted us. And yes, some of us have a little savings we can work off of. And some of us have been able to pull from the, you know, the PPP, the, the funding that the, the government has. But still, it's a little unsettling. And then today I read about Hertz rental car going bankrupt. I'm thinking Hertz rental car. And then of course you're seeing the big box stores, the JC Penney's and, and my wife, man, she was crushed when the cruise lines had to shut down because she had us booked to go to take a trip down to the lower Caribbean. So that kind of put the kibosh on us. But you know, I'm also seeing some individuals that we know that have begun to start losing their homes. Things are happening. Marriages are stressed, relationships are stressed. You can see the kids are super hyper because you know they don't know how to release that pressure, that tension that they've got. Had a guy in my office this last week and, and, and we were talking and he'd been with this company for 14 years. He's been in the industry for 43, but he'd been with this particular company 14 years. And he said, they called him and said, uh, meet us at the airport. We're gonna talk about the rest of the year, how we're gonna work the, the schedule and, and all. He said he showed up and he said, we're sitting there eating a meal and one of them slid, a, slid a, an envelope across the table and said, here's your severance pay. And oh, by the way, we need your keys to the car, your cell phone, your laptop. And he said, so I didn't see it coming. But he said, you know, Cooper, the hardest thing this, this whole thing has been for me. He said, I've been six weeks this, since this happened to me, but I've lost my identity. He said, I was always... I always worked for somebody. I always had a company. And so, you know, that's who I was. And he said, I remember, you know, about people that would come up to these these RV shows and stuff. And, and you had to be on a list to get in. And he said, I'm now the guy that can't get on the list because I don't belong to anybody. I don't belong to a group. And he said, that is the hardest thing because I lost my job. I lost my identity. And I just thought, ooh, that's got to hurt. And then I thought, yeah, that's happened to me twice. 
<laughs> I do remember that. You know, I, I tried to get into an RV, uh, not an RV rally, but a, a corporate uh, show that they were having at one of the conventions, and I couldn't get in. And finally, some guy walked up, and we got to talking. He said, oh, I've got some tickets to get you in. So he gave me a ticket. I got in, and I was somebody now. I could get in. And look at all these graduates. I mean, my daughter has, we have a granddaughter who just graduated. And so, of course, they couldn't have graduation service. So what they had is a graduation parade. And so the four high schools in this large community got together, and they all had a parade of automobiles. And, of course, it looked like a football rally is what it looked like. But I just thought, man, that's a shame. There is no closure for these kids. And then where's their career opportunities? So really, this has been a crazy, crazy time. But there is hope. There is hope. And, and, and that's what I wanted to share with you guys. We're not here to, to preach the doom and gloom. But here's a Zig Ziglar, who's no longer with us, but his son, Tom Ziglar, has written a book called Strong, Stronger. And in it, he says, I'm expecting the best, preparing for the worst, and I'm maximizing for what comes. And you know what? That's what we've got to do. We've got to shift our mindset, quit seeing all the news and focusing on the garbage that they're putting out and realize that there is hope and there's things that we can do. Now, when we went through our transition and we were, uh, was it six weeks ago, seven weeks ago now, that we were looking at starting the, the very next RV maintenance class, we had like 29 students in that thing. So it was, the class was going to be full. And, and of course, we got the shelter in order from our lo local county commissioners. And so we couldn't have class. So what we ended up doing is we scrambled around and what we did is we ended up doing Zoom and we did hybrid classes and we actually had 32 students in a class. So what Lady E, and I'll have to give her credit, this is my wife and, and I'll tell you, those of you that get married, you know when you married up because you know the caliber of individual that you're hooking up with and you think, yeah. So she had written a cookbook. And so she has the RV Centennial cookbook that was adopted by the RV industry. And, and we were sitting here discussing, she said, you know, what if, what if we could take these lemons? And I'm thinking, oh yeah, we're going to hear this saying, make lemonade. And she said, and make lemon pie. And I thought only from a cook, only from a chef would that come. And so she began to roll out her concept and that's what we've done. And so things have kept moving on. Our instructors are staying busy. As a matter of fact, I had one of them said, Cooper, I, I got to go home, man. I, I'm putting in too many hours. I got to go home. I got a grandbaby I got to go check on. And so life moves on. But what we've got to do, and, and part of Mr. Anderson and I were talking about, part of what we want to do is we want to show you that doom and gloom is not the answer. And we are here to share some opportunities. You have some options. And I'm going to share some things with you today. If I do nothing more than pull the curtain back and let you see that there's some opportunities, okay? But the main thing is becoming an RV technician. So let me lay a little groundwork for you, okay? I need you and I to think bigger because once we start thinking bigger and we, we, we lift our eyes up and quit thinking about, oh, the, how, what's going to happen if this takes place? What are we going to do if this takes place? You know what? Most of those things never take place because things change. It's amazing how one email, one letter, one phone call can change everything. And so let's look at this for just a minute. Now, in the RV industry, We've got over 10 million RVs out here in North America, running up down the highway. Now, the Bureau of uh, Statistics for Labor shared with us that, and this is some numbers that I ran for the Texas RV Association. I sit on the board for the Texas RV Education. Uh, let me say that again. Texas RV Association, and I serve as the chairman of the education board. Kind of got it by default since we have the RV program here in Athens, Texas. And they said, tell us where we are, what's going on. And there was all kinds of numbers being thrown around. So I began to do some research, got a hold of the RV Industry Association and RV Dealers Association. And right now, what we're saying is, is that there's 13,520 people that have been identified by the Bureau of Labor and, Stat and Statistics as being technicians. Now, I went over to visit with RVIA and said, okay, what do we have as far as those individuals that are registered and certified and mastered? Can you break it down for me for national and then also by the state? And they said, sure. This is what they gave me. Now, this is this is information I presented to the Texas RV Association the third quarter of 2019. 
Now, what they were really interested in though, is that far right-hand column, the one under Texas. This is sad when you look at it. Now, the numbers have come up because I'm telling you, we've been working hard to create registered and certified techs here. So the numbers, if I could get the numbers now, probably would be up a little bit. But unfortunately, that group of people, they've been sheltered in place, so I can't get a hold of them to get me the latest. But this is what we had in third quarter of 2013. 233, just in Texas. And look what we had across the country, including Texas, 2,865. Now, when you look at this Texas column, that 53 there, I'm one of those 53. So what that does though, that shows us that we don't really have that many guys and gals out there that are turning the wrenches. What we've got is a lot of non-certified part swappers. And if you've ever been to a shop where the part swappers got a hold of you, all of a sudden you realize that they bought a lot of parts and put on it trying to figure out what it was because they didn't know how things work because they didn't have the skills and the knowledge to do what they needed to do to get it to work. Okay. Now, let me show you something here. We are in the process right now of working with the Texas Workforce Commission, which in turn will open the door for us with the Veterans Association so we can get the GI Bill. We're having to put together this monster catalog of outlining all the courses and, and the, the resumes of the instructors and policies and procedures. I mean, it reminds me of when I used to teach at Texas State Technical College. I mean, everything was such red tape. Well, that's what you got to do. But the Texas RV Association has asked us to please put together a training program for RV technicians. So I sat down with a lady that's here in Athens, Texas, where we are, and she uh, handles this, this county plus the county next to us. And she shared with me, she said, let me give you some numbers. She said, did you know that you have your own, you have your own code? They call it the SOC code. I said, no, and she sent me to this link. So if you'd like to go and look and see what it is, if you'll just go and just put in that number, 49-3092.00, Recreational Vehicle Service Text, and you just Google that or whatever your search engine is, it'll pop right up and it'll give you this information. But this, there really is an occupation for this. And when she began to take me through, she said, oh, you've got, you guys are one of those that's classified as the bright outlook. And I said, what do you mean? She said, that's usually in our top 25 careers that if somebody comes in and wants, we try to move them in that direction because this is the job that has the brightest future and the, sh and the greatest demand. I thought, well, that's good to hear that we've got this. But if you just look, these are the things that we're talking about as a technician. But you're not just a technician, but look at all the other things that, that comes under that category. And so long and short of it is when we're talking about, you know, RV technician, it could have any number of different things that you would be responsible for if you were working in this career. And that's where I want to take us. I want to show you something here. Okay. Now I've had some guys ask me, okay, well, what kind of money can I expect to make? Well, let me just show you some things here. Now, if we look at mobile RV techs, now these are guys that run their own service business, they have their own small business. Now, I will say this to you in, in all sincerity. Mr. Anderson's mission is to help work campers have businesses. And if you've said in any of his webinars, you know what's going on, where they're always talking about the tax benefits and the opportunities that take place when you have a business versus working for a, a company. Now, it's not everybody wants to be in business for themselves, and I totally get it, but if there's ever been the chance that you have a great chance of being successful, now's the time in this RV. Now, I've had some guys ask me, okay, in, in our classes, they say, okay, Mr. Cooper, how do I know how to establish my rates so I kind of know what kind of money I make? I said, well, evaluate your market. You know, find out what other mobile service guys are charging. What do they charge an hour? What do they have service calls that they make? You know, what do they have up for their, their dispatch fees? And then go and visit the dealers and see what their posted rates are. A dealer has a rate that's posted for the public to see. You know, it might be $100, it might be $150. And, and I'm hearing some things out on the West Coast that these numbers are bumping up for well above $200 an hour that they charge for some of these big motorhomes and stuff that people work on. And so, Think about that. Think about where you would, you know, where would you, where would you go after this business? If there's RV parks, there's lakes, all these different things that are available to you, relationships that you would develop with these people to get the door open. You gotta also find out how to access parts. All of these things are what we've talked about or we talk about in class. Now, I know a gentleman down in Houston 
and I went to his website and I pulled this up. Now I did blank out his name because I thought out of courtesy to him, I would do this, but this is what he charges. Now he's got three service trucks that he's running. And so his flat rate is 125 bucks. Now, if you if he works after hours, there's an increase. If he works on the weekends, it's an increase. If it's a holidays, I mean, this guy's a sharp guy. He's been in the industry about 30 some odd years, so he knows his business. But everything that he does, he's straight up with people. They know exactly what the charge is. And it's not like he's going to pull a, a shenanigan on them because they know on the front end. But like he sh has shared with me is that, I have more business than I can handle and our rates, people, people just want the problem to go away. They just want this RV to work and I don't have to wait for six to eight weeks to get it into a shop to get it worked on. And he said, so they'll call me and they just say, just please make it work. And he said, they'll write a check, give me the credit card. All is happy. So long and short of it is this is the kind of money that you'd be looking at somewhere around in here. Okay. Now let's take a look at the dealer side because there's a little something different here because you're not working for yourself, but you're working for somebody else. Now here's some things that kind of drive the tech pay. Now let's just kind of walk through this a little bit. And what I'm sharing with you is some things that we have put together in an RV business program that Mr. Anderson is putting together. We're teaching folks how to become mobile techs. And that's part of what the Workforce Commission wanted us to do along with the Texas RV Association. The Texas RV Association has shared, look, if we had our brothers, we'd, have them, we'd rather have them working for us. But if we can't get them working for us in our shop, it sure would be nice to have individuals that understand what's going on and we can call that mobile tech in to do certain work for us. Contract with that person to work on whatever it is that we're not able to fix, and then we just pay them for it, whether it's warranty or whatever, and then we collect the money from the consumer or collect it from the warranty company or whoever. So there's all kinds of opportunities. Now, if you're looking at going to the dealerships, let's just look at these three categories here. Okay, let's walk through it. What I typically find, a shop that you go into, that if the shop manager is also a technician, it's not quite as productive because the shop manager is juggling trying to be a manager, but also trying to be a technician turning wrenches. So a lot of times his attention is torn and particularly if he's got technicians working for him, they're, they're pulling on him. So it's kind of like a woman who's, who's had triplets, you know, you got, you got kids everywhere and each one of them is crying and wanting something. And that's the way it is. But there's a lot of shops that just have a shop manager who's also, maybe he's the master tech and he kind of carries that responsibility, doesn't mind. But unfortunately, there many times becomes a ceiling that you bump up against because you can only get as good as your shop manager can be. Now, <clears throat> if you have a shop manager and they just manage the workload, in other words, they dole out the work orders to Harry because he's really good on electrical. You give the water heater issues over here to Tom because he's really a guru in water heaters and somebody over here is good at refrigerator. So he divvies out the workload. The production can vary because it kind of depends on how the shop manager is running his business. If he's playing favorites, sometimes you know he lose technicians because they said, hey, I got to make more money than this. And so typically that production can vary, but that shop manager that's managing it, usually their shop is a little bit more productive and a little bit more uh, cost effective. The most productive shops that you'll see is where they have a shop manager who takes care of the administrative piece, and then they have service advisors that are interact with the customers, and then each service advisor has a certain number of technicians under him or her, because ladies, women make great service advisors. And if anybody wants to talk to some of them, I've, we have a lady up here in Dallas. I am amazed what she can do. Elise is probably one of the best advisors I've seen. And she started out coming through our program, became an RV inspector. Now she's working at a dealership doing service advising because they, they wooed her away. So when you've got the service advisor, that individual is interacting with a customer and then that service advisor interacts with the say five or six technicians that's on their on their, their circle. And so that's who they report to, that's who they manage, that's how they interact because they want that, they want that technician out there turning wrenches and let the service advisor do the customer talking back and forth and interacting with the service manager and the customer. Now people say, well, what kind of money are we talking about here? Well, you have to understand how dealers rate their technicians. We have A-level technicians, B-level technicians, and C-level technicians. Now, 
I have managed shops before where I've had some A-level techs and they turn some business because they're good. They know their business. They, they know their craft, their skill. They've been at it for a little while. And so basically what they're able to do is to do a lot of work, but usually they're more disciplined. So they're not sitting around over in the break room, you know, break going over an extra 20 minutes or, or or maybe just take off a half a day and all that. These guys and gals are out there turning it, making it happen. And so many of them are making over 100K a year. And I in, in that sh one particular shop that I was responsible for, I had two of them that I knew they were making well over 100,000 because I saw their paychecks because I delivered it to them. And I, I used to be amazed. But you know what? You'd almost have to chase them down in order to get something from them because they were busy. And some of these guys even had technicians working for them and they paid them out of their own pocket. So basically what they were doing is they were bringing up trainees. And so they, the, uh, this A-level tech might have one or two trainees with them and, and the A-level tech might do the, diagnost the, the diagnostics and he'd say, okay, Charlie, I need you to pull this part, parts, pull this part, take it over to the parts department and get us for parts. And then he'd move on to the next one. So he may have four or five RVs that he's working on at the same time because he's got his, his team helping him. Now, B-level techs are typically individuals that are sharp. They've got a little drive. They're still learning their craft, still trying to develop some habits and make sure they're doing it right. But many of them make very, very good living. Unfortunately, sometimes some of these guys, they have some ups and downs. They have some really good months, and then other months they get a little lazy, and they say, well, I'm just going to take off a little bit, or I'm going to go do this, or they just go spend their money. And so getting that discipline, is the key to develop that B-level tech to an A-level tech. And then we have our C-level tech. Now the C-level tech is somebody, quite honestly, as soon as the dealer can find a B-level or an A-level to replace him, he's out of there. Because you have to understand at the dealership, every service bay and in front of every door of a service bay are classified as revenue producing real estate. So in other words, if you've got a C-level tech over here occupying a service bay and, and then on the overhead door on the outside, there's another vehicle. So basically that C-level tech is taking care of two pieces of real estate. If he's out here jacking around, smoking cigarettes, you know, shows up maybe three days out of the week. And then when he comes in, he's grappling because he said, I can't make any money. I got bills to pay. And you look at him and say, well, you know, man, if you just show up, I got I got work orders stacked up here that you there's plenty for you to do. Well, I just didn't feel like getting out of bed. You know, I had a really rough weekend. I, we went and partied and everything. Always an excuse. And so we were always looking to replace that C-level tech. And then what would happen sometimes you'd find when you think, okay, this is going to be a good one. I know he's going to be a good one. And he'd, he'd peek up there and he'd get up around that pretty good dollar now, 35, 40, $45,000. Think, okay, he's getting some habits. And then for some reason or other, some people sabotage themselves. You know, you know, you, you find out somebody had to go bail them out of jail or they had some sort of issues, you know, with their landlord or something. And it's just kind of, how come all the drama? If you didn't have all this going on, you could be making some serious coin and taking care of some, taking care of your bills and taking care of your family. Now, I put a little formula in here so you could see in the bottom right hand corner how we would figure it. We basically figured, you know, 40 hours, 52 weeks out of the year. Now, if they if they'd been us a little while that, you know, they'd earn a week's vacation or two weeks vacation. So, you know, you'd back it off. But if that person's making twenty five dollars an hour and, and, and that. 40 hours a week, 52 weeks out of the year, that person's popping 52 grand. Now, there's a lot of people out there, 52 grand would make go a long ways to what they've got to get done in their family. So there's some serious coin to be made. Now, there are some service centers that they are, they're sweatshops. That's just no other way to describe it. They say, okay, I'll pay you $8 an hour, $9 an hour. And you're and then and as you progress, maybe in 90 days, I'll give you another 50 cents or and you find out real quick there's just such high turnover and it you know so that's why i always tell the students that come through the programs here look go out visit with them talk with them go out there dress nice show them your certificate your your certifications and just visit with them and see what their workload is and just see what they pay and like I say there's a pretty wide spread there but the shops that are serious and getting it done they're paying their techs good money because there's good money coming in the door So I'm saying all that to say there's money, 
there's opportunity and let me share with you where you can get this training and skills that you need right now in the United States I am only aware of five different places that you can get RV technician training there's two schools down in Florida the state of Florida the trade association the RV trade association has a, a online program it takes you a year to go through it and it's just basically watching videos and PowerPoints. And then there's a school out of uh, Pennsylvania. I used to teach that online school. It, took, it would take you two years to go through that program. And I used to do that as distance learning instructor. And then the, we used to have the national, let's see, we used to have the RVIA, RV Industry Association, and the RV Dealers Association would create credentials for helping train technicians. They had a little onboard online training program to get you ready to take your test. Well, as of July 31st of 2020, they will sunset that program. And so what they've done is they've started a new program with an organization that they have created. They funded it and created, uh, given them some pretty good coin to get this thing built. It's called the RVTI, stands for Recreational Vehicle Technical Institute. And RVTI has been a little slow coming out of the blocks. And so there's a little bit of struggle right now. And, and RVTI's main goal is to train dealer technicians. They're not interested in consumers at this stage of the game because what they're teaching right now is they have set up four levels, level one, two, three, and four. Their level one would be what we call a PDI, somebody who would go through the RV and make sure everything's working. There's very, very little troubleshooting and te technology. They haven't got it there. Part of the problems that they're going to have coming up and, and that they're going to struggle, as we've already begun to see, they've missed some deadlines to, to get this information out, is when they lost Gary Bunzer, they lost their leader, helped develop their program. So to the best of my knowledge, the National RV Training Academy here in Athens, Texas, is the only school that you can get you in here and get you out in five weeks and get you the certifications you need to be able to turn the dollars you need. Plain and simple. And, and we built this facility for this very specific reason. We were just looking about maybe training work campers and, and some mobile techs, and then when the Texas RV Association put in the request, and now that we're seeing all that's going on, you know, I, I'm, I'm seeing that these dealers are scrambling because business is great for them because a lot of folks are buying RVs for a number of reasons. Airlines, you know, they don't want to fly anymore. Cruise ships, they don't want to do that anymore, so they want to just take the RV. And then we've got some people that are buying RVs because that's going to be their new home because they're losing their other home. So we put this program together to train. I'm gonna walk you through some of it, okay? So bear with me. Uh, Mr. Anderson, are there any questions that we need to answer up so far? So far, uh, not yet, Mr. Cooper, but I'm sure there will be. Okay. Sorry guys, I had to lay some groundwork, but I just need you to understand where we're coming from, okay? Well, all roads lead to Athens, plain and simple. That's Athens, Texas. As you can see, we've got Interstate 20 coming across. We've got 35, 45, so it's a major intersection. We specifically bought this RV park called the Texan RV Park with the intent to build a training facility. We've been traveling across the country for, I believe it was eight years. We'd pull into RV campgrounds that we had booked, and we'd they'd have, say, 25, 30 sites for us that we'd be able to um, – have students come and stay in and then we'd rent a room there one of their rec rooms and we would have classes there and we would just move on and so what we would do is we'd travel florida texas arizona california up the the western seacoast of the seaboard and then we would cut and then when things start warming up then we would cross over and come back into uh elkhart indiana and catch some of the and, and we would go to uh uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and some and other schools and other places like that. Very solid venues for us to do classes in. You know, sometimes we catch uh, Denver and so on. But what we found was is that it was becoming more and more demanding. It became harder and harder to find parks that accommodate us, because what's happened is many of these parks were sold to companies that were investment, and they wanted to have people living in them for the long term, not just nightly and weekly. So it kind of took away some of our opportunities. So let's talk about your path to success. And I mean, plain and simple, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it out on the table with you. Uh, it's a two-step process that we've gotta go through. If you wanna be a certified RV technician, so you can do your own business, you have, or go to work for a dealership and have the credentials and not just be a part swapper. The first one is, is and this is what we call our training triad. 
So everybody comes through the how to master your own RV, the RV maintenance piece. So whether you're a consumer or you're an RV technician or maybe you're going to become an RV inspector, you know, did you know that you can be an RV inspector and inspect RVs just like a home inspector does? So we have that ability to, to, to help people there as well. So what happens is you spend one week taking the RV maintenance course, the basic training. We're going to cover the three electrical systems and, and then we'll talk about the propane and show you how to use your multimeter so you can measure electrical AC and DC and then show you how to check for propane leak test and uh, do life safety issues, taking your multimeter, checking for hot skin, see if maybe somebody's driven a staple or a screw through you know, 120 volts and all of a sudden now you got the door handles and everything electrified. So we take you through that first week and develop the core. And it's kind of like those of you, if you've ever taken an English 101 class at a college, you look across the room, it's monster classroom, maybe 100, 150 students in there. Um, and so what happens is, is that in that class, you've got all kinds of people in there. You may have pre-law, pre-med, accountants, who knows, but everybody's taking English 101. Well, it's the same thing here. Everybody's got to take the RV maintenance course. That's what gets you started. That's your foundation. When you finish that as a technician, you can sit and take the prep and the exam to become a registered RV technician. And I've got guys that are leaving here and going to work for dealerships, no problem whatsoever. Um, I average four to five emails and phone calls a week, dealers saying, hey, send me some technicians. Like we got somebody parked in the garage out here, right? And we just have to explain to them. They try to tell me, well, I got all these wonderful benefits and these perks. And I said, sir, I don't have anybody. It's just as soon as they're, as soon as they're trained, they either go in business for themselves or they go to work for somebody and they're making very good money. And I said, well, if you hear of anybody, let me know. I said, sure will. But I can't give them much hope because the demand is so much greater than the supply. And so here's a golden opportunity for you and I. Now, the second step is going to be a four-week program, and, it, and I'll show you here in just a minute how it's all broken down, but long and short of it is this is the advance. This is the hands-on piece that you want to get. You know, it's great to get the register because that gives you such a solid understanding, but if you really want to be able to work on the air conditioners, take them apart, troubleshoot them, do all that sort of stuff, refrigerators, furnaces, water heaters, the uh, slide-out systems for these coaches, the leveling system, the roofs, the running gear, all of that is involved in these four weeks of advanced training. So some things that we know about us as technical learners, and I'm one of them, I'm thick in the middle of them, I'm here to tell you. Um, I can learn through the books and online, but I don't learn as well as I, I learn with my hands. If I can put my hands on it and I can take it apart and I says, have a sneak of suspicion, many of you are the same way. You probably learn best by doing it. If you're learning how to use a new program or you know, like Excel spreadsheets, whatever, you're learning by doing. And it's the same thing. Well, we believe that the more opportunities we have to put our hands on it and troubleshoot it, the better we'll learn it. So that way when we leave here, we can go to work, whether we're working for ourselves or we're working for a dealership, and we have built a solid foundation and ability. Now all we need to do is to develop our, our skill, our craft, and become more familiar with the equipment that we'll see. Now this is one of the service bays. Um, this is the five-day class. This particular class was rather large. Now you can see what they're doing here. They're talking about the frames. Uh, Lippard brought in these frames for us and gave them to us. We had to cut a deal with them. We give them access to the, the, the building uh, four times a year so they can do their dealer training and their vendor training. And so what they did is they shipped us the frames. The one that here closest to you is the fifth wheel. And the one on the far end behind them is a travel trailer. And the frames were shipped in. We put the axles on them and the jacks and everything. And so this one here, this fifth wheel, has got hydraulic leveling system as well as we have put electric leveling system. So what you're looking at here is a group of people out in the service bay. Now, the five-day class would cost you $1,644. But here's a cool thing about it. We have found that many times we need to come back and relearn or do this thing through repetition. So what we establish is from one year, from the time that you completed this, this five-day live class, you have one year to come back and do what we call a do-over and for free. Because what I find is the more you get involved, the more you retain, the better you'll be as a technician, 
as a consumer. So we've opened this up. Now there's a couple little things that we ask of you. We ask you to please, if you're going to come back to the class, notify us because we have to limit how many we can have, how many redos we have with the regulars. But I also ask you to bring your tools and your books and things that you were given to you. And also to kind of be a big brother, big sister to help the new ones that are here because they're struggling. And it may be that you say something in the right way that, that is the key to unlock their knowledge. And so it's amazing how many times sitting across when we have our potlucks or sitting across the lunch table or, or maybe sitting around talking during break, some, all kinds of conversations take place. And all of a sudden it's kind of like, ah, that's what they were talking about. And so by coming to these live classes, that's what you benefit from. Not only what you're getting from the instructor, not only what you're getting from the material, not only what you're getting from the hands-on piece of working on things, but also the camaraderie and the, and the relationship that you develop. That some people come to you, have knowledge that you don't have, and you have something that they don't have, and you're able to share. Now, we've got this facility. We were blessed to have 15,000 square feet. What you're looking at over here on the left is a picture. Now notice the windows. We've put windows in these walls so that way visitors can observe without disturbing. Because that's part of the learning process. People come to learn, they're not here to be entertaining visitors coming to the facility. So what we did is we put windows up. Now, the reason why this window's got a little bit of reflection on it, because I was taking a picture through the glass door, so, or, yeah, you know, the window of the door so you could see what was going on there and you can see where they're, they've got some instruction going on, see a power supply and some cables and stuff that they're working with. Now the picture on the right is a picture of the service area. That would have been where we were looking a while ago when they were, uh, they were working on the frames and all, but we own RVs and we actually have these RVs. Let's see, we have three, so we have seven, so that way we can work on. I have to stop and think sometimes because we had, we had two brand new ones just given to us by a dealer. They had never been titled. Can you believe that? They had never been titled. They had all kinds of bells and whistles on them. And the guy told us, said, Cooper, I want our people to know how to work on this stuff. And of course now he's sending technicians to us, so it, it benefits him. And that's really what he was after. He said, if you teach him on this, I'll, and so he cut some sort of deal with the manufacturer, I suppose. But long and short of it, we have two brand new units that had never been titled. Now what you're looking at here is um, one of the, the issues that you deal with is how do you inspect a roof? How do you see what's going on in the roof? Well, we have one of the service space, so we have a total of four. One of the service space has a canopy or, or a catwalk, if I should call it that, with handrails. So that way people can stand there at the handrail and look over and watch the instructor. Now, Howard is the instructor. He's actually teaching this particular group, happens to be RV inspectors. And what he's doing is he's showing them some things. And not only does he have the ability to stand in front of them, and he's the only one on the roof of the RV, but he also has a GoPro camera, and he's shooting a signal up to that television screen. And you can see in that far right-hand picture, that's what he's doing. He's showing them up close some things that they would never see before. Because you'll be surprised how many people never, ever get up on a roof of an RV. And so you need to know what you're looking for so you can take pictures and bring them down to your customer and say, here's what I'm seeing, and this is what it's going to take to do the repair. It's amazing. You come down and tell them this, and they kind of sort of believe you. But when you start showing them pictures, it's like night and day. They, You are the guru as far as they're concerned because you're offering them some opportunities and you found things that they didn't even know existed. So let's take a look at this here. And, and, and I want to lay it out in a little bit different format for you. The first week is the RV maintenance. That's the one we were talking about, the 1644. We'll be coming back, and I don't mean to date our video here, Mr. Anderson, but long and short of it, July the 13th, we will begin, we will come out of shelter and we will start to do this RV maintenance class hands-on. Now, there are, when you go to the website, to the, the nrvta.com, uh, there's other dates that are listed past this July. But what we had to do is we had to, we had to shift gears and go into a hybrid mode where we videoed everything and we, sh we had live video Q&A that we did with the video cameras we had. And we opened it up for the students. Now those students are gonna come back and take the class live with us here in the classroom, but they wanted to get a jump start. July the 13th, we will start the live hands-on piece again. That's the core, the foundation. 
at that point, then you can sit down and, and sit and take the registered and cert uh, the prep and the uh, exam. We actually take a full day on Saturday to do the prep, and then on Sunday, usually you can take your exam and, and by and within two or three hours and get it done and move on. So you can actually get your registered certification after you complete that first week. Now, those of you that want to move on and become more, have more credentials and have more knowledge, there's going to be a week of air conditioners. There's going to be, and when you say a week, it's four long days. And folks, I'm just going to tell you, it's 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 fire hose time because there's a lot of stuff we're throwing at you. Then a week of refrigerators and furnaces and water heaters and the slide outs and the roofs and all the other. When you finish that that fourth week of advanced classes, which would be a total of five weeks, when you complete your fifth week with us, then you're ready to set for the prep and take the exam to become a certified RV technician. And I just I, I, let me just say this to you: there's few guarantees in this life. But right now, in this economy that we have, even right now, if you've got your certif certification, there is no problem finding a place to work. It's there. I've got, like I said, I've got Texas RV Association calling me. I've got dealers here in Texas calling me. I got a dealer out in California calling me. Can you please send me somebody? I said, don't have anybody. You know, got guys off the East Coast. Had a guy down at Houston calling, talked to me the other day, and said, Cooper, he said, I, you know, I got these texts. I'm running mobile service, but I need some more. So there's opportunity. And that, that's where I'm trying to go with this, okay? There's opportunity. Now, what if, what if you were given a chance for a new start, or what we call a do-over, or those of you who play golf, I think you call it, what, a mulligan? What if you had a chance to have a better life for you and your family? Some of you, I know, have gone through some really disappointing days. You know, you got called in and say, hey, this is the end of it. We're going to have to cut your hours back. I mean, I was talking to one of the manufacturers, and they're cutting their people. They said, well, we're, in order to hang on to people, we're going to cut their salaries 30%. Even that's not fun. And we had others as individuals that they came through and whacked off exactly 40% of their workforce, from management all the way down to the folks out there in the warehouse or in the shop. 40%. But here's a chance for you and I to do something for our family or to help others. This morning, when I was getting dressed, getting ready to come in, this is a little coin basket I've got sitting on the dresser. This is where I empty out my pockets. I'm notorious about, I'll see a screw, screw laying here on the floor, and the last thing I want to do is run over it and you know get a flat. So I'll put it in my pocket. Well, if I'm not careful, it'll end up in the washing machine, and we have some issues. So I'm notorious about taking things out of my pocket. I mean. Look, this is accumulation coming out of my pocket. But my point is this. You say, you know what, Cooper? I, just, I don't know if I can do this. You know, I'm, I have to watch my dollars. Folks, I'm telling you, you can. There's opportunities that you can do this. Because here's the thing. Lady E and I and, and the Andersons were talking. And what we've agreed to do is this. Normally when you come in, you know, you have to sign up and you pay for your class. But because we know some of you are faced with situations that maybe you just can't wrap it all together at one time. Maybe you've only got the tray of, of quarters in your, in your, on top of your dresser. Well, get a hold of Lady E. And she says, I've got this easy payment plan. And we were laughing about it. She said, I had some guy call me and said, Lady E, all I've got is 200 bucks, but I, I want to reserve a spot. And I've got some more coming. And she said, okay. She said, just understand, all I ask is, is that before you come to class, that the class be paid for. And so she set him up on a payment plan, and she like she told me she said, now I just ask you to help me cover my cost. I, you know we got we're going to put credit card charges on it, so just help me cover that cost. I think it's like ten or fifteen bucks. And so every time this guy calls in, or she set him up on a schedule, and they work together. And she's done this with several individuals. And so we talked among ourselves and said, you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Because sometimes if we can just if somebody would just give us a break. Just give us a chance. Give us a bump. Well, here's your opportunity, folks. Here's your opportunity. Now, what if you can't make the next RV maintenance course, the one that we're going to start in July? What if you can't get? We still got you covered. We have what we call the home study option. And what it is is that while we were traveling, we recorded every session, every class that we did, 
and then we kind of cut through it and took the best of the best and broke it up into segments. And these segments are somewhere between 8 and 15 minutes long. And it's basically us in the classroom. You can hear the questions from the students. The cameras are on me and we're talking and, and carrying on. We loaded all this material on this flash drive. And it's there and then we ship you the books as well. It's the exact same books that you would have if you were sitting here in the classroom. Now, if you, let's say, if you've got good internet access and you want to get started like right away, all you have to do is get a hold of us here at infoNRVTA.com or call the telephone number and, and they can set you up and, and, and give you internet access because you can take the classes online. Because here's the thing, folks. If we sit around and say, someday I may do this, I'm thinking about doing this, even if you say, I can't come or I can't get away to come to the five-day class that you've been talking about, Cooper, at least you have the home study. And what you do is you learn this material. You take this material and you go through the workbooks and you get it squared away. And that way you gain the same knowledge that they're going to be doing in the five-day class. And then what happens is, is that when you complete this home study piece right here, what you're going to be able to do is there's a coupon in that book. Or if you sign up, you're given a coupon for $300 off of your five-day class. So let's say that you want to get a jump start on this. Maybe you've got an RV that you want to work on, something you want to do here, and you need to get this knowledge. Instead of just sitting around watching tons and tons of Netflix and all the videos and the hallmarks and everything else, do something productive. Prepare yourself. And here's an inexpensive way to do it. And it may only have taken the change out of your little your thing on your dresser. I don't know. But long and short of it, here's an opportunity. And then take that $300 bonus and utilize it to learn. Because what happens is we're going to encourage you to come and spend the five days with us. You apply that $300 so that all of a sudden now that $1,644 is now only $1,344. And you get to do that class. And remember, if you come and do the five-day five, class, five class, you also have one year to do a do-over. So by golly, you got three shots at this thing. And what we see a lot of times, people will say, I'm going to take the home study first because I can't get away. You don't have vacation. Or I can't get away from where I'm at. And then when I can, what I will do is I will take the five-day live class and do that as my come in and do it and take my cash in my bonus. And then the very next week, I'll start taking the, the advanced classes. And the beautiful thing about the advanced classes, and I'm going to back up for just one, let's see, two slides right here. You do not have to take these classes in this order. You could take week five for all that matter. When week five is offered to you, come and take it. If week three, and we've had, we had one guy that just wrapped up and he got his certification. He was coming out of North Carolina. And so what he would do is he would drive down and he'd take a class and then he'd go home. And he waited for the next rotation because the rotation is approximately every eight weeks. We start a new RV maintenance course. He'd come back eight weeks later and he'd take the next class. And he's been doing this. And Cisco has done a fabulous job. And when he sat and took his certification, he knocked it out of the park. Because he said, you know, the cool thing about it, I've been learning and going and applying it, and now I understand it. It makes sense to me. And, folks, that's what it's got to do. It's got to make sense to you. Now, these are the instructors. This is us. This is who we are. This gentleman wearing the black shirt, his name is Todd Henson. He helps me teach the RV maintenance course. He's a certified master technician. Spends a ton of time. He and his wife have a, uh, a YouTube channel called Two Beards and a Babe. You can kind of figure out who's got one of the beards. And they've got this old schnauzer, little female, Zena. She's got the beard. So obviously the girl, the wife, is the babe, right? Got that one. This guy wearing this green shirt, that's Craig Johnson. This guy is a generator guru. I am I am blown away sometimes. He can, he can walk up to it and listen to it running. He said, oh, it's going this problem. It's got this problem. He understands it. You can look at his hands and tell this man has worked. But he's also a certified technician. Now, this guy with his wine-colored shirt, that's Leon Booth. He's our guru, and I'm, I'm going to use that term loosely, for air conditioners and water heaters and furnace. He owns a mobile service out in West Texas. 
he just bought land out there. He said, I got to set me up a shop. He said, I'm running four service trucks. And he said, I've got to find a, I've got to find a place to house us. He said, business is great out here. Even though, and he's like, he told me, he said, the crazy thing about it, the oil industry is down, but he said, there's still a lot of people out here working the pipeline and, and, and working the wells and stuff. And he said, so these guys, he said, we're busy. We're super busy. And then this young lady here, her name is Pam and her husband next to her is Howard. They are the advanced class trainers for the those of you that would do RV inspection. That's who Howard was up on the, the trailer a while ago. And, and then, of course, yours truly over here on the far right hand side. But let me just tell you this. If you're ready to be successful, come join us. We will help you. I promise you we'll give you everything we've got. Guys. I love to get the emails and the letters from people and say, Mr. Cooper, thank you. What you guys taught me in those classes made all the difference. It, it, and when you, when you hear the stories and you know the background or the struggle that they had to get here or the struggle they had going through the classes and then you hear the, the success, that's when you know you're doing what you're supposed to do. And that this is where I'm at right now. I'm at that point in my life if you'll come join us, we'll help you be successful. I promise you. Because here's a chance for you to get a do-over. Here's your chance to take care of your family. Get out of the doom and gloom and realize there's opportunity. Even if you start with a home study and then you move into these advanced classes, or the, the come here and take the, the RV maintenance class and then the advanced class, we'll help you. All we want to do is to keep this thing rolling because I'm telling you, we built a big facility and I kept thinking, why does this thing have to be so big? And I now understand why the Lord opened the door for us to be able to be here. And it's been phenomenal, the opportunities we've had. Can you see yourself be one of these people? Now, I just I just randomly pulled pictures. There's, there's I, We were counting the other day, I think we've trained right at 2,000 individuals coming through these classes. A lot of smiles. You see a lot of nervousness when they're taking their test, but there's a lot of tears of joy when they take that test and they pass it. You say, yeah, I knew you could do it. And they said, I was so nervous. I said, but you did it. And that's the key. You did it. And you did something for yourself. You did something for your family. And you're going to be able to help some other people as well. And that's really what it's all about, isn't it? It's helping the other people. So are you ready? Are you ready for a new start? Are you ready to have a new opportunity? Sign up. Come on. If you, you got to take the first step, we've all got to jump out there. And f trust me, folks, if it had not been for people that helped me and given me a bump, given me a break, I wouldn't I wouldn't have been where the Lord has blessed me with. And here's your opportunity. So I'm paying it forward to you. OK. Mr. Anderson, are there any questions or anything that we need to respond to? All right. Yeah. Great job, Mr. Cooper. Uh, we had a question asked earlier by Randy, which you hit on, but I would like you to go a little deeper if you would. Uh, okay. Randy asked, um, can the advanced courses be taken separately or is it four straight weeks? Oh, no, Randy, you can take these things separately. You don't, I mean, it's, it's up to you. We actually have some people that come and say, look, all I want is this one. That's okay. But of course, it just means you won't be able to get the certified RV technician, but you can take them separately. No problem. No problem at all. All right. And in Kemp. any order on top of that. All right. Kemp has a question. He says, I'm currently doing the home study and okay. was wondering if I can use the $300 credit to be applied towards one of the advanced classes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You sure can. Mm-hmm. Okay, do they, um, I'm trying to remember here, Mr. Cooper, you're more you're more in touch with this because I'm in Heber Springs and you're in Athens, Texas. <laughs> in order for them to take the advanced courses, though, they have to take the live class there in Athens. Is that correct? If they're going to go towards the technician side, yes. Yes, they okay. do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So We had tried to do it home study, folks, but... <sighs> You see individuals that struggle, so you realize they really didn't grasp the knowledge to the depth they needed to. And so what we found was is that the home study gets you primed and gets you ready. And what happens when you get here, it's, it really causes a lot of things to fall into place when you get here. All right. 
Um, Deanna is asking, what's the cost of the home study course? And Deanna, that was the, um, I don't know if you had that on there or not, not. She's asking, it's 397, I think you did. And um, yeah, there you go. And you can also do that in three easy payments. Mm -hmm. And she's wanting to know the cost of the advanced classes. I'm not too sure we did have that up. You know what, I think you're right. I, don't, I think she's right, we didn't. Uh, let me back up, okay? And bear with me, folks. I'm going to zip a little faster. Each one of the weeks, two, three, four, and five, each one of those classes, $1,500, $1,500. Um, here's the cool thing about these classes. We have air conditioners. I mean, you cannot, if you can imagine, you saw those rooms where the students were in that room and I was peeking through the window. Imagine on three walls, air conditioners all the way around. And what, what the instructor, what Leon does is he put bugs in them and lets you troubleshoot them over and over again. And what's amazing is, is that it starts making sense. The theory now makes sense because you own it because you put your hands on it. All right. Here's a, here's a question that I know you'll love. Uh, it's from uh, T. Scott. He says, what about housing? Is there inexpensive places to stay close by for people <laughs> between RVs or without an RV? Well, we bought the Texan RV park, didn't we, Mr. Anderson? So the Andersons and the Coopers went on to the Texan RV park, and we have 89 sites, six cabins, and four RVs that are kind of the Airbnb type RV setup to where you can come. So whether you drive in or however you get here, there's a place. If you happen to have an RV, bring it because there'll be there'll be sites here for you. So one of the things that we what caused us to do this was I was talking to my friends down in Florida, the ones that run the two schools down there, and they said their chief complaint that they have is that particularly when the snowbirds are there, it's really, really hard for them to find places for their students to stay. He said, I, one of the guys told me, he said, I had a student li living, living literally in his pickup because he could not find a place. And he said, we'd let him come in and take a shower every now and then and so on. But the problem you have is that if you don't have a place to stay, it's kind of hard to stay focused. And so when we bought the RV park, it gave us that. And so you can literally walk to class and, uh, you know, see the ducks out here in the pond. Bring your, if, you, if you drive in, bring your fishing pole. We've got three ponds here, catch and release. And... Uh, Good size bass in that thing. Let me tell you, pretty good size bass. <laughs> All right. Uh, Har Harvey is asking, um, let's see if I can get my line straight here. Can someone take just the one week basic course and what is in the course? Okay, the one week basic course. Uh, yep. Yeah. No problem. And, and we, we see we broke all this down because we know that as adult learners, our schedule gets kind of screwy sometimes. So obviously what's in that course, and you, if you'll go over to the NRVTA website, uh, let's see, I, you know what, Mr. Anderson, I normally have that slide, but I didn't put that slide in here. But if you guys will go to the NRVTA website and you can look and see all the breakdown, but we do two days and nothing but electrical we're going to talk about the three electrical systems. Did you know the RV has three electrical systems? It's got the AC, just like our brick and stick house. We have the deep cycle battery that runs all the components, you know, the lights, the water pump, and everything inside. And then you've got the 12 volts that runs your turn signals and lights and stuff, you know, automotive style. Then we're talking about a full day of propane. you got to learn how to do propane leak tests. And, and, you know, and, and I've had people tell, oh, well, you know, it was checked at the dealership or it was checked at the factory. I got news for you. <laughs> There's a lot of them get through. We do. We have done. We a lot of the technicians we've had that have come through and helped us. We actually did some work with FEMA, and we. I mean, hundreds of FEMA trailers getting them ready for some hurricanes that took place in Florida and North Carolina. We had one unit had six propane leaks, and all it was is at the factory they hadn't tightened everything up. So this, this technician was going through and tightened it up. So, you know, that hands-on. Then we get into the water systems, talking about the freshwater tanks, the gray tanks, you know, the, the shower sinks tank, and then the black water. Then we spend two days going over the appliances. Now, what we find is, is that we can't teach you everything you need because there's, there's an advanced class that goes much deeper. But we can show you what's going on. I mean, show you where the thermostats are on these units. And so you can see how to go in there and do some maintenance. A lot, we have a lot of folks that come in and say, look, I, I just need enough to kind of take care of myself or take care of my unit. No problem, you'll get that. 
and then we'll also show you where you can buy your parts and supplies you don't have to pay retail folks we can, you can get set up with these accounts where you can buy this stuff and buy it at the same price the dealer's paying for it so uh, there's there's all kinds of opportunities here it's just like say come spend some time with us but I would ask you to go over and look at the, uh, the website NRVTA and there's a drop down menu it talks about the courses and take a look at it and you can see what the RV maintenance course has in it and it's we laid it out spelled it out for you all right Don says after taking the advanced classes is there a time requirement to be completed before certification is issued um, you mean a requirement for it no uh, we have a lot of folks that graduate on, on finish their their last advanced class and then the very next day they're in there taking the prep test and usually we like to schedule it that way it's kind of one of those things you know short-term memory we seem to forget a lot of stuff the longer we don't use it so we found the quicker we can get you in there and get you taking the prep because here's something else we've learned most people are not good test takers they, they're just nervous over it and so they freeze up and so if you've got a prep day that you spend with them so you go through things in the morning we have we cater lunch here and then we give them that afternoon and then they get the study guide to take home with them so they can study that evening and review it and what we find is is that those questions that you're seeing are so similar to the exam that when you start taking the exam you say oh okay I know this I know that and those that you miss is typically because you got in a hurry and misread it or didn't even read didn't even I had guys that missed questions because they didn't they forgot to, to circle the right answer and what happened they just got ahead of themselves so you can do it right away or you can delay it's up to you so my encouragement to you is is that uh, as soon as you can it makes it so much easier on you and you get it and it's such a relief because now you've you've let down because you have been blowing and going in these five weeks of training and then you take this prep and then you take the exam and there's such a relief it's just like I made it and so the quicker you can do it the better you'll be in the in the more uh, peace you will have because you're you know you know what you've done you you have started something and you completed it and that's always a big thing for us as humans we like to have things completed in our lives all righty Deanna is uh, excited about what we're talking about she's asked a few things I'm gonna bring them together into one question okay. it's kind of a statement and a question that says I'm brand new to this and this is my dream so I could rent and live in an RV while I learn question mark and get the opportunity to live in an RV before I buy also correct there you go there you go we matter of fact I've got some dealerships that they send some of their techs to us and, and we, they said what do we have for housing so we have RVs and they said you have RVs and said, yeah he said and this one dealer told us he said I have guys out here working on that have never even spent a night in one he said this is going to be great they need to know what the customers going through when they live in these RVs so yes yes there is um, and let me just speak to the ladies here gentlemen you just kind of you know close your ears ladies we get a lot of calls for women and the reason being is the dealers tell us and also a lot of the folks are a lot of you ladies are going in business for yourself maybe not being full-fledged rip off the roof kind of people and rebuild sidewalls but just do maintenance and service and so a lot of times other ladies will be calling looking for another lady because they say I can relate to this other person and quite honestly typically the ladies are very more, much more methodical because they know there's a procedure there's a procedure of troubleshooting and they don't hopscotch around they are very, I mean because typically you know we're many times we're raised differently but if we have a recipe to follow if we'll follow it it'd be successful well that's the way it is here when you're learning to troubleshoot so please ladies don't back off some of the bravest ladies I've seen are solos and I tell you what if anything happens to Terry Cooper I'm I know beyond a shadow of a doubt Lady E will just keep on keeping on because she's she gets hitch hitch every now and then so she wants to go do something so <laughs> why can't you you know there's opportunities for you all right Julia is asking the question how long do you have after completion of the home study to apply the $300 discount to the five-day in-person course do you still get to repeat after the in-person course if you start with the home study course 
Okay. You have two years to take the home study and apply it. So that $300. And when you come, when you finally say, okay, I've got a break in my schedule, you come and take the five day class, the RV maintenance course, you still have one year to take that course again as your do over. And we set it up that way because the more you know, the better technician you'll be. All right. And Mr. Cooper, um, Natalie is asking, does it cost to stay in the park beyond the cost of the course? Natalie, yes, we do. Um, unfortunately, they're two separate entities, the school and the park, even though the school is built onto the park facility. But uh, we've tried to keep our rates down. We're not some outrageous, but like say, yes. And we actually have some special deals where we work with the students in terms of um, Say you're going to say with us five weeks, well, we're not going to hit you up for two two months. That's not what it's after. So, yeah. And the thing to do is just to, to contact the Texan RV Park. If you go to our website, NRVTA, there is a link to take you over to the Texan. You can actually see pictures of it. You can actually even go in and make your own reservations there. They've got an online system set up to where you can go and look at pictures of the site. If that's when you want, you reserve it, and it's blocked off for you. All right, Julia's already thinking ahead here. She's asking, so if if uh, you have no RV, is there something to practice on in between classes while at the Texan RV park? I love these questions. This is so good. It's almost, are you sure we haven't met or something? Because you're kind of feeding these questions like she's leading them to us. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, that's the beautiful thing about it is, is these other units. Now, what's gonna also happen is you're gonna develop some relationships with some people that in your class that will have their RVs here. And so you'll be hanging out with them. And it's always amazing to me. They'll be hanging out after five o'clock and they'll still be working at dark because they were playing with this, working on this and said, now I understand why he was doing that. So yes, whether you rent one of the RVs because that's the one you'll be tweaking with or you'll be uh, working with somebody else. Now, there are some things that we're going to ask you to do. We're going to ask you to do, go outside and do a hot skin test or you're going to, we'll show you how to check to make sure there's not stray voltage where it get electrocuted. We're going to ask you to do a propane leak test. We're going to have you go inside your electrical panel box and we'll have you disconnect it, put a trash bag over the, the power cord and what we call bag and tag. You're going to bag it and tag it and mark it, you know, test in progress, do not disturb, do not plug in. And then you'll go in and you'll take your cover off your circuit breaker panel box and identify all the things because we're going to have you look at the wiring. Because if you, you would be surprised, we have yet to have a class, and I can say this and, and without having to back up, we've yet to have a class if we didn't have at least one individual have some sort of electrical. Some are worse than others. I mean, what do you do when you open that panel box up and those white neutral wires are what we call tan brown or crispy because they've gotten too hot? Or what happens when you reach over to your little screwdriver and, and do what you're instructed to do is to check all the connections and you find out that those wires have gotten hot. So the connector has expanded and the wires loose in there. All of those things are things that you'll find because I find that if you can just put your hands on it, the fear goes away. And that's what you want. You want to make sure you understand it and you're not afraid of it. All right, Randy asks, is the exam and certification an extra fee or is it part of the course fee? It is an extra fee. It is because we know that not everybody's going to want to take it because we'll have some folks that come say, I got what I needed. So it just it didn't seem fair to put that in there and not everybody utilize it. So what we do is we set it up for you uh, for the registered. It's uh, the study is two forty nine and the exam is ninety nine dollars. And so, you know, we're going to feed you lunch that day. We find if we keep you around here, then you can get you right back into class. Then when you get ready to take your certified after your your fourth week of advanced, uh, that course, your, the prep class on that one's 249 also. And then the exam is 298. And so that's going to give you your certificate. That's going to give it gives you the test, the exam. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm saying the same thing. It's going to give you the exam. It's going to give you your certificates. It's going to give you your patches because you're going to get patches to put on your shirts. And so when you leave there, you'll know exactly what you had. As a matter of fact, when you come and you take these exams before you leave, after you graduate, after you've taken the test, you will have your certificate with you. And you'll have your patches with you. So we want to send you home flying the flag of victory. 
Can you guys hear the rain going on? Nope, can't hear it. Okay. Well, it's, it's raining down, overhead. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, T. Scott asks, um, you mentioned people calling you looking for techs. Does the school help with or have a job placement service? You know, we don't really have a formal, but what we do is we uh, will direct the techs or direct the dealers to send us uh, information, give us, and we'll put it we'll put it on the website, we'll put it on the Facebook. Uh, we have a special closed place for the the technicians, and we're getting to the point. I have a sneaking suspicion we're going to have to open up a job board, something to post on the wall. I've already got dealers who are saying I'd like to come talk to your graduates. But I'm reluctant to do that right now because I, I want to keep you guys on track. And then if you want, then we can help you connect with those people and, and then give you a chance to even interview with them. And that way you can kind of see if there's somebody you want to work with or they want to work with you. All right. A question that's tied to that, uh, Bobby asks, is it possible to gain employment just as a registered tech? Yes, Bobby, it is. Uh, what what will typically happen if you show up and you've got your your certification as a registered? They typically will put you in a shop and put you either under a a, a master tech, or they'll maybe say, depending on what your skill level is, they may even turn you into a service advisor, where you're interacting with a customer. If you have, if that's if you're comfortable with it, not everybody can handle dealing with the customers every day and dealing with the technicians. Or they may have you in the shop working on things and, and having you do some things, maybe doing what they call the pre-delivery inspections or maybe doing the uh, the walkthroughs with a new customer. Say somebody buys an RV and they need somebody to show them how it all works. So as a registered tech, yeah, there's, man, there's a lot of work to be done. And as a matter of fact, what I find with these dealers many, many times, they, they bring you in at a certain point to do something and they begin to kind of watch you. And, and, and if you show that you've got some moxie about you, you've got a little work ethic, next thing you know, they have, they've moving you up. And I've actually had dealers that would do that. And then next thing you know, they'll send that student back to us and say, hey, I want him to get the air conditioning class, the advanced air conditioning, because I'm going to have him working on air conditioners. And so we'll work with them and you know, have them come here for that week. And so what we find is that many times if you get into the right shop, they'll actually even send you back on their dime. Now, they may ask a favor of you and, and make you sign a contract stating that after you take this class, you'll stay with them at least another year. Or if you leave prem prematurely, that you'll refund the, the cost of that course back. So, yeah, there's absolutely, absolutely. Um, Registers, I mean, that's just that's just the beginning, but you'll be going to be surprised how many guys you're going to meet at those shops have nothing, and they're just learning by the seat of their pants, plain and simple. So you're going to come in with some credentials they don't even have. All right. Kemp asks, are schedules available yet for the dates of the individual advanced courses? Because I will most likely be one of the snowbirds who can't make it until fall. Okay. Yes, there is. If you'll go to the nrvta.com and you can look at the different courses and click on it and it'll it'll bring it up. Uh, Lady E is already working on 2021. So we'll be posting that up here pretty quick. But right now we do have all the classes to the end of the year posted on the website. Sure do. All right. Rhonda asks, how do you test out of the at-home study course? Uh, there's actually a test. When you complete it, then we will we'll send you to a place where you can take the online test. Now, if you happen to be taking the online version of it, it's already built in. And so when you finish your last module, it triggers and gives you the exam. So it's and all maybe, there. Maybe for clarification on that, Mr. Cooper, that is not the registered exam. That's just a final exam for the course. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. To take the registered, you're going to have to take it here with us um, because we want to run you through that prep. I need you to be successful. What I what we have found is, is that if somebody takes the exam and they really haven't done a good job of studying and preparing and they struggle, it's hard sometimes to get them back in the saddle to take the exam again because it kind of knocks the wind out of them. So. For instance, let's go back through this. If you take the home study piece or you take, you know, you get the thumb drive, 
or you take the, the, the piece that's online, when you complete that module, then you will be taking a course exam. Now, if you want your credentials, we're gonna ask you to come and take the live class. And then when you finish that live class, then you can set for the certificate, you can set the registered exam here as well, okay? It's, I, I don't know of any other way to do this other than just we, we've got to have you come so we can prep you and get you ready, and, and, and so that way you can be successful. All right, Jonathan asked, and this is tied into uh, taking the exams and so on. Jonathan says, do you have to take both exams to become a certified tech? Um, no, you don't. We've actually had some guys that have been able, they come in and they take the uh, the RV maintenance and maybe they come back later and say, I'm gonna take the advanced classes. And and basically what they did is they just jumped over registered. Yeah, so you possibly, yeah, absolutely no problem there. We just need to know up front that what your intentions are so we can make sure that we help you track. Um, we recommend that you go ahead and do it in segments to get your registered because if you're one of these adult learners that you're coming and going, what if there's a break or something happens in a family and you haven't got your certified, but if you had just taken your registered, at least you, you've kind of repositioned yourself, you've planted your feet and you've got that piece held before you move on. But here again, that's part of it. Talk to us, reach out to us at the, the info NRVTA so we can talk with you. We can guide you through this, guys. You know, we, we, can, we can spend hours talking about all this, but really what we need to do is talk to you because everybody's story, everybody's situation is a little different, a little bit unique. All right, Deanna says, in light of COVID, is there a limited number of students allowed per class? Well, we like to cap it, this is pre-COVID, we like to cap it at 25 because the inter, there's so much interaction with you and the instructor. We will know when we come into July how many they're going to allow us. I believe that we'll be back to the 20, up to 25. Um, part of it is because the way the state of Texas is, our numbers are looking good as far as people that have been you know, infected with it. But then also the governor here in the state of Texas has classified as technicians as essential. And here's the crazy thing. You go to a dealership, you can't talk to a salesman can't do it. You can order an RV online, talk to them online and email and everything, but you can visit with your technicians and you can bring RVs in because they classify that as essential. And part of it, of course, is so many people are living their units now. And so, you know, that's their home. Well, Mr. Cooper, you have done a phenomenal job. That is uh, all the questions that have popped in and they did a phenomenal job of asking questions today. I really that's appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good ones. Well, any closing comments you'd like to make? You know, folks, it, it all boils down to this. The instructors will help you. We're here. And we, we have really kind of picked the cherry, uh, the cream of the crop, you know, the cherry of the group, because all of our instructors, if they're not master certified, they're at least certified. And they've all got field experience because the reason why I need the field experience, need you guys to have that, is that there's one thing about having book knowledge, but if you've got somebody who's there working with you and showing you, said, look, let me show you. If you'll take out these three screws, you can get everything you need to do. You don't take this whole thing apart. And then they're gonna share with you problems that you're gonna find out in the field that's never ever in any textbook. And that's what you want. You want where people will show you. And, kind of, and for lack of a better term, maybe the old Uncle Fred to coach you through it. But so come, help yourself, give yourself a fresh start and come spend time with us. Even if you just have to start with a home study, that gets you with the foundation. So when you get here, you've got it built and you're rocking and rolling, okay? So come see us, come spend time with us and we'll help you all that we can to help you be a success. All right, Mr. Cooper, phenomenal job. We want to thank everybody for joining us today for Right from the Horse's Mouth, and we look forward to seeing all of you in Athens, Texas, as you come to the Big Red Schoolhouse and enjoy the training at the National RV Training Academy. This is Steve Anderson for Work Camper News, and we're going to call it a wrap. Thanks, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, everyone. We'll talk to you later.